Hey, my name is Martez, and we're taking the month of March to talk about, you guessed it, peace. Proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Did you know that when God created the earth, there was perfect peace? He always wanted us to have peace on earth forever. But unfortunately, two people named Adam and Eve made a choice that caused that perfect peace to go away. God knew this would happen, so he had a plan. Stick around after the Bible lesson to hear what that plan was. Our March memory verse is Romans 12 and 18. If possible, live in peace with everyone. Do that as much as you can. Now let's make that personal. I choose to live in peace with everyone as much as I can. Now let's give it over to my friend and I'll see you a little later where we'll find out about God's plan of peace. Hey everyone, let's praise and worship God. Then we'll hear from the Bible why Jesus came to be our savior. See ya. That you gave me for the cross when you saved me you're the friend i call my own now i know i'm not alone so thankful for your love on display and it will never go away you're the reason for my song now i know we all belong you show me what peace is all about it's my turn to go and live it out jesus you're the way without a doubt I'm gonna love the way you first loved me I'm gonna praise the one who set me free We gotta show forgiveness that we need Like I know you did for me, I believe Jesus is peace Jesus is peace That you gave me for the cross when you saved me You're the friend I call my own Now I know I'm not alone So thankful for your love on display And it will never go away You're the reason for my song Now I know we all belong You showed me what peace is all about It's my turn to go and live it out Jesus, you're the way without a doubt Welcome to Story Lab. 
This week, we're getting ready for Easter. While we take a look at what happened the week before the first Easter. Uh-oh. These are gonna be hard to dye. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're getting ready for Easter next week, which is, spoiler alert, celebrating that Jesus is alive. <gasps> are we dying eggs to celebrate? I have a different idea. Eggs Benedict, omelet, over easy. Oh, re-scrambled. If a specially designed egg carton can't protect these eggs from cracking. What can? That is my idea. Well then, let's make it. Um, what are we making? The perfect egg protection device, Oobleck. Ooh, what? Oobleck. We're making our own Oobleck. It better not rain from the sky. For this experiment, you need potato starch or corn starch and water. That's it? That is 100% of the ingredients. No food coloring? Okay, sure, always. Step one, measure two cups of potato or cornstarch into a bowl. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Make sure to clean up your mess at the end. Is it two, right? Two. Now the water. Step two, add one cup of water. Colored water. Colored water. Now mix it all up. Uh, this is weird. Stay with it. It will mix, I promise. Done. Oh, it's kind of like Play-Doh. Yeah, but stop kneading it for a second. What is even happening? <laughs> Oobleck is a non-Newtonian fluid. You definitely just made that up. A non-Newtonian fluid like Oobleck can be both a liquid and a solid. When you apply quick pressure, the substance becomes thick and viscous. But when you move slowly, the starch particles can slide out of the way. Then the substance oozes and pours like a liquid. <gasps> but wait, what about the eggs? I'm so glad you asked. I hypothesize. A hypothesis is an educated guess about what will happen in an experiment. I hypothesize that if we pack oobleck around an egg and drop it. Oh, oh, the oobleck will turn solid and protect the egg. Great minds. Hold up, we need a control subject. If this egg cracks and the oobleck egg doesn't. Then oobleck is even more awesome. Ready? You don't have to egg me on. Ready, go. <gasps> It worked! Let's see that again. Oobleck is amazing. You expect it to be one thing, but it's actually something else. Speaking of which, it's time for... The story before the story. Today we're in Matthew, the very first book in the New Testament. Matthew carefully recorded the story of Jesus to help people understand that Jesus is God's son. As Jesus traveled across the land, teaching and healing, the religious leaders got upset with him. Jesus became more and more popular, and the religious leaders were afraid of losing their power. Everything felt upside down. Then Jesus raised a dead man back to life. It was the last straw. The religious leaders decided it was time to get rid of Jesus. They decided that Passover week would be the best time to do it. Which is where our story starts. Take it away! Hey everyone! I'm Erica. So, Jesus had been traveling and teaching people how to love God and love others for about three years. He was gaining so much influence with the people that the religious leaders got scared. They figured Jesus was sure to come to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. When's he going to show up? 
We shall order the people to report to us where Jesus is staying. Then we get him. Jesus might have known all this was happening, but it didn't stop him. As he and his closest friends made their way toward Jerusalem, they paused on the Mount of Olives in a small town called Bethphage. Jesus called two of his disciples over and gave them special instructions. Go to the village ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a donkey tied up. Her colt will be with her. Okay, got it. Then what? Untie them and bring them to me. Uh, that could be awkward. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. The owner will send them right away. Okay, then. Jesus' friends did exactly what he asked them to do. They brought back the donkey and her colt. Then they threw their coats across the donkey's back for Jesus to sit on. Now you've got to understand. Over three years, Jesus had walked hundreds and hundreds of miles. There is no other record of him riding any other horse or donkey. So why did he have to ride this last short distance into Jerusalem? So glad you asked. Over 500 years earlier, many of the Jewish people had been conquered and taken to a faraway land, but some of these people were allowed to return to where they were from and rebuild. Life was difficult, and the prophet, Zechariah, encouraged them to turn back to God. Zechariah even spoke of a king who God would send to rescue them. Say to the city of Zion, See, your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. He is riding on a donkey's colt. Wait, what? Kings are supposed to show up looking impressive, maybe riding a war horse, right? But Jesus came to give himself for others, rather than demanding things for himself. By riding into Jerusalem on a humble donkey, Jesus was showing that he truly is the promised king, the rescuer sent from God. Lots of people were making their way to Jerusalem for the Passover, and a huge crowd gathered. They tossed down their coats and cut palm branches to make a path for Jesus. And they shouted out, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is the Hosanna! one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna! Hosanna! The whole city was stirred up, and many people came out to see Jesus, including some of the religious leaders. This is outrageous. It's like the whole world is following after him. Downright preposterous. Which is why we're going to put a stop to it. A stop to him. The stage was set. Jesus had entered Jerusalem on a donkey, showing himself to be the rescuer God promised, our savior. The crowds cheered for him as king, but the religious leaders wanted him out. Through it all, Jesus stayed focused on what he had come to do. The end. Cliffhanger! Yeah, I mean, it's festival week and people want to make Jesus king and others want to get rid of him. Can we just tell the rest of the story, please? We sure will, next week. Well, in the meantime, what's our part in the story? Well, ever since people turned away from God and the world was broken, God had a plan to restore us. God chose one family, the Israelites, and promised to bless the whole world through them. Then God promised to send a rescuer through that family line. Jesus! You're right! Jesus is God's very own son. But Jesus didn't come to take over and fight the Romans like people expected. Yeah. Jesus showed that it's more important to love and serve other people. And then, spoiler alert, Jesus chose to give up his life for us. All of us have done wrong things. We've sinned, which is a word for anything that breaks our relationship with God. But God actually never leaves us, right? Exactly. God is always with us. But we can turn away and try to live on our own, disconnected from God, through Jesus, we can be restored to relationship with God. When you choose to follow Jesus, you will be able to live forever with God, no matter who you are or what you've done. <laughs>
I've heard it so many times and sometimes I forget how absolutely mind-blowing it is. Jesus came to rescue me, to rescue you. To save everyone who follows him, no matter who you are or where you came from. It's true. God loves you that much. See you next time. So here's the thing. Jesus came to be our savior. And because of that, someday, everything in this world will be made right again. It's the most amazing news ever. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Hey, do you think we could walk on Ooblek? Maybe, but please do not take off your shoes. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh yeah, God's plan of peace. God loves us so much that he had a plan for us to receive his peace before we were even born. His plan was sending his son Jesus to save us so that we can have peace forever. But it's a choice we can make. The gift is salvation and it's free. And it's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit that you have sinned. And B, believe that Jesus died for our sins and is alive today. And C, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yep. It's that simple. Now repeat after me. God, I admit that I have sinned. I believe that Jesus died for our sins and is alive today. I confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. I want to be part of your family forever, and I want to live with you. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior. I am saved. If you made that choice and you received God's gift of salvation, you're officially a part of God's family forever. Now families, if your child has received salvation today, we want you to tell us about it. Just text Faith Chapel to 94000 or scan the QR code on the screen. Tell us about it so we can connect with you and love on you a little more. Thank you for hanging with me today and I'll see you next time. Hello, March. We are kicking off Easter week with the story of Palm Sunday and finishing March by celebrating Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is alive. As we celebrate Easter this year, we want kids to know why we make it so important about this special day. Jesus was more than a good teacher, a miracle worker. We believe that Jesus is God's son and through him, we can have life forever with God. Jesus is the savior. We all need to have a forever relationship with God. We invite you to check out this week's family activity guide. You can download it from our Facebook parent group, our website, or follow it from your phone. Inside the packet, you will find amazing activities that make it easy to keep growing in God's word with your elementary kid. It helps you to talk about today's Bible story. It gives you an activity to complete together. It guides you through prayer and so much more. Decide when and how you want to use these great tools at your fingertips and you will be amazed at how much your elementary kid is learning and growing in their faith right at home with you. We have one amazing in-person Sunday service for kids. If your family is interested in attending in-person service, please join us on either our Birmingham, Alabama or Columbus, Georgia campus. For more details about the in-person service on the campus you attend, special days when we worship together in the main sanctuary as a family, and much more, please visit faithchapel.net forward slash family for more details. Enjoy your day.